Welcome to our channel. This is our first video. Um, hopefully they'll get better, but our farm is called Black Walnut Farm. It's a hobby farm. On our farm, we do bees, we do maple syrup, we do organic vegetables, and we used to do chickens, and maybe we'll do chickens again sometime in the future. We are located in southern Ontario, and while the winters have been getting more mild, um, we still get a pretty good cold snap. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a beehive that I built. Um, I've been working with bees for over 10 years, and I found that the most difficult thing is overwintering. Um, in my case, I found that it was because of moisture issues, that the bees are building up the heat inside and generally getting the cold on the outside and creating moisture and killing off the hive. Um, that's why I decided to um, change my hive design and build something um, that would be that would help the bees overwinter. So what I've decided to do was to search the internet and see if anybody else was in the same situation and was trying to design a different beehive. Um, I did find one person. Um, his channel is Vino Farm and I'll put a link down below. And I got some ideas from him but I built mine a little bit different. So hopefully uh, I'll walk you through it and hopefully there's some information here that if you decide to build something like this that it's useful. Because of my lack of success with overwintering, I no longer buy hives. I find that you can uh, put up traps. Um, if you find somewhere where there is hives, um, there's always going to be swarms. So if you can find somewhere where you can put up a trap near a commercial place, or um, you can do uh, swarm trapping, which is um, you know when uh, you get the ball of bees, I get lots of calls for that and also removal from houses. Uh, somehow the bees have gotten in and I'll go in and, and remove them from a house either physically or by putting up some sort of trap to to lure them out. Um, here are some different pics of, of uh, different captures or swarms that I've done over the years. The front hive entrance has a winter and summer mode. Right now it's on summer mode and in the winter I unlatch it, close the door, which gives them a smaller hole, which could also be used if the uh, hive is struggling. You need to keep uh, robbers out. The other thing, I'll tuck a little bit of insulation in this side just to tighten it up. If we look up, we also have an upper entrance. Here is the um, top of the hive with the roof off. Um, this is a deep. Um, I did buy the pine that was not reclaimed to build the boxes, the inside boxes. All the outside are still reclaimed cedar. Um, you can see inside I have it set up here for winter time. In winter time I'll put down a sheet of blue insulation, maybe some um, pillowcases with shavings inside to, to um, soak up the moisture. I like doing that so I can change them every month or so, maybe even a little less depending on how, how quickly they get damp. In the fall, you can flip the top
to make it a feeder. Now this is made out of half inch plywood, so it's a little bit stronger. And then we put it that way. And then we put our jars on with our syrup in it. And that way it's protected. The box sits over top. And it's all protected from robbing. And I just use ball jars filled with syrup. I put some holes in the, the ends and then you still have a vent in the middle. If we take the cover off, you can see that there's frames in here. Now this is something I did take from Vino Farm. So instead of, in a normal hive, you'll usually have two boxes and you gotta take one box part to get at the second box. Here, which is a great idea, uh, is a deep and a medium put together. So when I want to check my bees, I can pull out both frames at the same time. I really like that idea. I thought that was great. In between the outside box right here and the cedar is two inches of blue insulation. And then I have on the outside about half inch of cedar, um, reclaimed cedar. On the back of the hive, I have a clean out, which is right here. And below a screened board, I have a cafeteria tray, which I'll put diatomaceous earth on. Um, we get a lot of hive beetles in our area, so this is a good way to catch some of them. Uh, amongst, I, I generally use two or three different ways of catching hive beetles, but this is one of them. And it also catches any of the junk and you can clean out the hive without having to go into it. Great idea. And I'll put some insulation also in here in the winter time just to close that up and make it airtight. Here is the beginnings of the hive before we add the insulation before we add the cedar. This is how it starts. I build a base. Which is right there. And then in between I build a place for the screened board. And then it's just a, after that, it's just a tall and a medium. And I use the Craig jig to put them together very easily. After that, the blue insulation will go on just like this. And as you can see, it sits up a little bit higher and that allows me to still, and I trim this back just a hair. So I got enough room to get my, my cover on here and my um, top deep that I use for feeding and for winter insulation. There's an inside view. You can see the screen board at the bottom. And if I put my hand in here, the hole at the back, and the hole in the front. So that's the, that's the beginning of the build. So that's my first video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you got any questions or comments, about the uh, my beehive, um, I know Vino Farms calls his the bee barn. Uh, I was hoping to call mine something a little different, um, but I haven't come up with a name yet. So maybe I'll call it the bee barn. You know, because I am kind of going off his design. Uh, we'll see. Anyways, we'll be having other videos. Um, just to, probably things to do with the hobby farm. We we are going to do some styrium pumpkin oil this year and uh, building ourselves a uh, 
a planer stand, and uh, a few other things coming up before winter. Thanks for watching.